This is a video to show you the new features of GoFish version 4. Um, GoFish has been around for uh, many years. It's kind of been stagnant since about 2004 at version 3. So I got interested I got interested in this uh, project to do some updates to it. So I want to show you some of the new features it has. Um, this is going to be a VFPX project and when the software is released you'll be able to download it from the VFPX website and we'll make sure that plenty of links are floated around to help you uh, get that downloaded. So in Fox Pro once you've downloaded and installed the GoFish app file to some place in your folder structure you can simply go to the command window and type this do statement to launch the GoFish form. And so you'll probably recognize that it looks quite a bit different from the former GoFish version if you ever used it. There's been a lot of work done on the UI and a lot of ways to make it look very similar to code references because um, I understand that several people use that as their standard search engine, so a code search tool. So we're going to try to carry over as many of those features and functionality that's that's possible here in GoFish. So I've already got it launched up here and it's kind of preset. You'll notice in this path, this area of GoFish is always going to persist the the most recent area that you used it on. So if you most recently searched a project, it'll come up in the project if, that you used last time. If you searched a folder, it'll it'll remember that from session to session. So before I do this search, I'm going to um, show you how you can kind of change some things about it. I'm not going to search in this area. That's from something I was working on before the video. The advanced button will bring up a form that lets you define the areas that you want to search for as far as um, an active project. If there is an active uh, project that you have open, for instance, it will recognize that and, and pull that in. Uh, you can also browse recently used projects. It, it has a way to kind of keep track of all the, the projects that you've recently worked with in uh, Fox Pro. Or the current directory, it will it'll know there, uh, know your current directory and you can go there. Or you can go and manually just type in a, a folder path or use this to select one. So I'm going to go back to this project. Uh, this is one that I work with a lot. And I'm going to change the search word to job num and uh, there's also provisions here for kind of masking down the file types that you want to work with so uh, these settings are on by default uh, from the beginning but you can go in there and kind of just uh, unclick these and maybe manually turn back on certain ones that you you might want to focus on this is a standard feature of GoFish from way back uh, you can also type a, a file template so if I know that I just wanted to search for uh, maybe files that, that were job or uh, if, even if I provide an extension here it'll actually override uh, these other check boxes so if I do provide a file extension that uh, will really allow me to focus in on a specific file type that I want to search and or if I just want to provide a, a file name template then the file extensions would still be provided down here uh, if for some reason you work with some other um, file extensions in your project that aren't uh, in your code base that aren't listed here you can uh, you can uh, type them in here and just put a space in between them and I don't know what kind of extensions you know people might work with but if they're searchable text files uh, you can just put spaces and provide them in there. Uh, it has just your basic uh, other options that you'd expect um, matching whole words or matching case. It also um, supports regular expressions uh, that you would enter up here. You just turn on the regular expression checkbox and then enter some of the madness of, of uh, regular expression searching up here. Uh, it also can do timestamp filtering so it will go and look at file dates and uh, objects within SCX and VCX files based on the timestamps of those objects. You can use this powerful little feature to uh, drill in and find maybe just objects and code that you've uh, edited within the, the recent few days or something of that nature. So um, you can also, another interesting thing about the project area is you can limit uh, this search to the project home and, and subdirectories only. So if you have some other paths that are referenced that maybe are outside of the the folder path of the project itself, you can prevent it from searching outside of there if you've referenced in some other code bases or something like that. I'm going to turn that off. So I'm going to go ahead and let this search run. 
hopefully it's um, quick enough for you the, the the results in this kind of faint font are shown up here 112 matches in 0.3 seconds um, several columns are shown to um, that are I think important then most of us would be interested in the file name the match line and, and as well every one of these results that we click on the the matching line from that file is shown in this little code view window down here and um, this is actually an HTML browser window with colorized HTML code and if you had a large uh, code uh, block uh, this HTML rendering could get a little slow on really really large files but for the most part it, it's pretty snappy to update and show you the the line and even the word within that line that, that this match line corresponds to Another very helpful aspect, I think, of, of GoFish is this GoFish 4 is this match type um, column, which if you sort by that column, there's been a lot of effort put into uh, trying to identify the kinds of code matches that were found, be it uh, property names, property values, just good old Fox Pro code lines uh, right here, uh, comments. Um, hopefully, uh, you'll find this is a helpful way. In fact, there's a filter button that you can use for this for match type column, and well, in fact, most of these columns. If you click the filter form, will pop up, and uh, you can turn on or off any of the columns. It'll analyze the the grid for match type, and it'll show you which ones are present. And you could turn in and, and say maybe, look, I only want to see property value matches, and so it'll kind of narrow that down for you and look at those. And even when there's a filter set you'll notice this font becomes bold and then there's the apply button beside it so you can actually turn the filter on or off uh, with the apply button and that filter is persisted between searches so uh, maybe I go back and just search for job. Um, the filter is still alive it's not turned on because we don't have the apply button clicked but uh, you can turn it back on with that and you can bring it up again and, and you may find more uh, columns present in match types this time and you can also uh, just kind of supply individual uh, partial matches in all of these other areas down here maybe if, if I know that even within the, the match line area perhaps I just want to search for the word caption maybe I saw that back there so um, you know now we've filtered it down to where we have match types of, of property value but yet we've also sorted the match line to where the word caption is present uh, in the match line itself so it's a lot of flexible searching that can be done uh, with this filtering that appears in fact if you're not careful you can over filter the grid so much so that um, you know maybe nothing would show up if, if I did perhaps I turned on uh, comment and turn this off and leave caption uh, sure enough uh, you know there's so much filtering applied that there are actually uh, no matches on the specified filter so um, you try you turn it off of course and those will come back on the next thing I want to do is go ahead and, and do a, a little more aggressive search find some more results I'm going to clear out this file template that we had from before and um, let's let it go ahead and uh, kind of run through this. I want to show you the use of the tree view. Um, in this case, uh, we should have a, a, a greater collection of Fox Pro items here. So this time we've, we've got a collection of forms where we had matches, uh, class library. So all of these nodes can be expanded and collapsed in the tree view. Uh, even within the class libraries, the individual VCXs, as you expand those, you'll see the class definitions within each of the VCX files. So uh, and as you click on them, they basically become filters as well for the grid, so you can see the way that uh, only the matches that correspond to that particular class within that VCX. And uh, you can always get back to the full results from click the top node up up at the very top of the tree view there. And um, so um, the other thing about the HTML browser is that uh, you can kind of change the font size to zoom in or zoom out. Another good thing about the grid is that you can double click on any item in the, any row in the grid and it will bring you into that file and right to the very line where that match occurred. And of course here's the word that uh, this match came from. So, And that works for uh, even all the way down to uh, classes and forms. So if we take this particular uh, class and we find one of these uh, particular rows. Now that's a property. Let's find, let's see if there's a method somewhere in one of these we can get to. 
Uh, here's a method. So if we double click on that particular method name, it'll open up the class and take us right into that method uh, for editing. And um, of course, uh, if you do a lot of code editing while you're in there, the results of the search results could now be different. So you may need to rerun the search after you've done that. The last thing I want to show is the options area. Um, there are several things in the grid. There are only about six or eight columns shown by default. Uh, but you can use the options button and there are many uh, other columns you can turn on. I won't go down the list. You can just kind of play around and you'll see the different things you can turn on to show the file extension or classes, the parent classes and base classes. Uh, and all these are remembered between sessions. Even on the preferences there are some things there like the grid and tree view font size, the maximum number of results that would uh, be displayed. The search would eventually just stop after a certain point. Um, so there's a few things you can play with there that will just kind of configure some of the functionality of the GoFish search form itself. All of the settings that GoFish works with, window positions and the, set, the settings that you'll enter in the dialog uh, boxes and so forth, they're all persisted in these individual XML files and those are stored in this path that's shown here. You can actually click the open folder button and it will open those folders up uh, for you to uh, kind of see them and do a little maintenance on them. You shouldn't need to, but uh, there are some fancy things you could do if you started digging around inside of those XML files. Um, and the last thing is uh, integration with Thor, uh, which is a new project coming out on VFPX as well. So there's a way for GoFish to go ahead and register itself with Thor so that all that will be wired up and available through the menuing system and, and things like that. Um, as well, the columns, I don't think I pointed this out, all the columns are uh, movable so you can rearrange the columns in any uh, order that you want to and of course they're all sizable. And um, there's a small little help screen that will pop up that will have a few links to um, the website and some other information. Um, appreciate all my testers by the way, probably not all of them listed there, but I've had a lot of people working with me to, to operate test versions of this as we get closer to releasing it.